It's time for another Dirt Daily, and today we are going to check out this Jeep that has a custom shock set up from a company called SDI. Uh, this is known as their E-Click system, and what it does is, well, basically, if you've ever been off-roading and you want to tune your shocks while you're moving, say maybe you're going rock crawling and you want the suspension to be really soft and supple, and then you like are bombing back to camp and you want it to firm it up a little but still allow the axle to move but not bottom out so quickly or then you're on the way home from camp and you're like driving through weavy mountain roads and cornering quickly and so you want it to be really firm this is a system designed to automatically tune your shocks depending on how you're driving it to do just those types of things um, they offer it for jeeps they offer it for ford raptors they offer it for side by sides and they offer like a universal system so that you can put it on just about whatever you're building using a certain style of shock. So today we're gonna hop in this thing, go for a drive and find out more about the system, how it works, what it does specifically, and how much it would cost if you wanted to put this on your next 4x4. Okay, I'm here with Dan from SDI and um, Dan basically said here, drive this Jeep, check out our system and tell me what you think. And I drove the thing around for a week and I was like I don't get it and then Dan came by and was like well have you messed with all the settings and I was like no so basically what happened was um, I've had this thing in off-road mode for a week of driving and Dan showed up and showed me how to adjust everything and in five minutes I was like oh now I get it so I'm gonna put the windows up because we're gonna get some wind noise and we're gonna go for a little street drive um, and basically the way this e-click system works is there's a computer yeah there's a main ECU it's actually like OE level ECU and what is that ECU connected to so first thing we're connected to we actually do connect to the Jeep stock ECU so we can receive information like the driver your vehicle speed throttle position brake pressure all the basic inputs that we need you're good on my side what about steering uh, steering angle um, and yes. even engine RPM okay and then the next thing we have as part of the kit you bolted on just um, on the firewall is an IMU sensor which is giving us um, what's IMU stand for Inertia, uh, inertial measurement unit. And um, it's basically all the degrees, basically rotation X, Y, Z and acceleration X, Y, Z. So it, plus knows, angle. it knows as I'm, I'm doing this, yeah. and then if I like do this hard left turn, that's so, what the IMU is recognizing. Yeah, but we also, it's seen steering angle and it knew your vehicle speed. Oh, so okay. when you turn your steering wheel that sharp at that speed, okay we're going into a pretty heavy corner so it'll take all of those things put into our algorithm and sped out okay this is going to be the best for that situation so the shocks are always supposed to be at the ultimate think of a shock like in a clicker and adjustable what we're trying to do is click the shock for the exact right at the right time for the right position and then go back to um soft or a comfortable ride especially for like off-road okay so and it does that like instantly yeah it's just basically milliseconds you can go from full stiff to full soft now the system do you guys supply the shocks or do you supply just the part in between the shock body and the shock reservoir actually well we do both on a jeep we have a complete system it comes with all four shocks all the wiring all the everything basically plug and play um for the older jeeps that's jk jl jt for uh, what we just actually announced is a universal kit, which is reservoirs, and you can go now, any shop that's on the market, King Fox Icon, um, that has a remote reservoir, you can undo that remote reservoir, put our reservoir on that has the electronic valve in it, and then run our complete system. Wow. So you... So my Dodge that has two five Foxes with a Resi, I can put your system on? Yep. And... Would it work as well as this, or is this, or does that still hook up to the IMU and the ECU and all those? So years? our universal um, setup, it actually only works off of the IMU. We don't plug into the vehicle's ECU just because of that. I will say it worked. It surprised us. I didn't think it was going to work as good as it did, but we had to play with the IMU settings, and you know we changed quite a bit. I would say it works between 80% as good as actually having vehicle speed. 
it just without vehicle speed it's a little bit hard to know how to react to certain bumps like hitting a bump at 20 miles an hour versus hitting something at 80 miles an hour of course is a change so that's just a huge piece of the puzzle that's important so this system basically what i'm not showing you because i have the camera pasted at us is there's a screen on the top of the transfer case shifter um actually let me let me just turn this around Okay, so this is your basic transfer case shifter in the Jeep. Um, and on top of that is a screen. And Dan's gonna kinda, now, so right now you can see the Jeep and you can see zero, 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 zero. That is what? What does the zero stand for? It's basically full soft. Okay. We just did zero, everybody understand. Zero is like the least stiff and 10 is the most stiff. Okay, now, can I adjust that while I'm driving or does it do it automatically for me? In auto modes, it's automatically adjusting. You can still do fine tune adjustments. We say don't do it while you're driving, but it is automatically adjusting as you drive. Even if you hit the brake right now, I'm sure we'll get a little bit, there oh. you go. So it actually is different. We're at a little bit of an angle also. So you notice how the left front was three, the right front is actually higher. So it didn't stiffen the shock as much. So now I'll, I'll make the shade, you adjust it. Change it from, Perfect. from road to, um, so this trail. is our main menu here. We're gonna find the mode. So you do some swiping and you do some turning of the dial. <laughs> I'm looking through two cameras. And there's, all right, so there you can see the red line is next to the road setup. Yep, and so we wanna go off-road. We go and just hit that button. Now it configures the Jeep. It's more of a softer ride, a little bit less to do with driver input. And it's, you know, your loosey-goosey off-road Jeep, like how everybody wants to set their Jeep off-road and comfortable. Um, it still reacts. If you're going to drop off a little cliff, it's going to stiffen up the outside shock that's dropping first, but it's going to keep all the other ones soft. In road mode, it's definitely, it's more geared towards driver and driver input. Um, it's looking at steering angle. A good example we are talking about earlier is if you turn your steering wheel 10 degrees and you're off-road, we don't really need to compensate much on the shocks. If you turn your steering wheel 10 degrees and you're going 40 miles an hour, you definitely want the shocks to react to that. So the on-road mode's reacting to that. The Jeep handles like a car on the road. You don't have to have that, my Jeep's a wallow bucket all over the place going down the freeway. It handles like a car at this point when you're in road mode. Now, what about the manual? Does that allow me to set the shocks itself? So manual actually turns off all the automatic adjustment. So if you click it into manual and you want it to go, we're just gonna swipe back out and you wanna go to your settings, um, we'll go to rear. You literally go full soft. That is like getting out of, an, out of a vehicle on a normal shock and clicking your compression adjuster full soft. Think of it that way. If you wanted your shock full stiff, you just turn the outside knob and go that. To do the front, it's basically the exact same thing. So now if you were in a situation where you didn't want the active to work, um, you could go ahead and just manually adjust it like this. We thought that more Jeepers would end up um, wanting the manual mode just because they're used to controlling their suspension. Not that many guys use this, it's pretty rare. Everybody just leaves it in trail mode. In trail mode, you also have this adjustment for fine tuning, but it's still active. It's constantly changing doing, depending on what train you're on. Here you can see how the shock body on the left attaches to the reservoir on the right. And then where it comes together, that is where the e-click system plugs in to help control the tuning on the shock. So, I'm driving to the trail. I set it in uh, highway mode and I can take the thing around tight, weavy mountain roads and it stiffens up the suspension and makes it drive like a sports car. It's, it's close. It's pretty <laughs> close. It's still not quite a it's sports It's still a car. Jeep. It's still a Jeep. We're on 37s, but um, with mutters on it. Right. But other than that, yeah. Like we just hit, what was that, at 35 and there were 40, uh, it was probably 50 degree turn. We're on a windy little road right now. What do you think? Yeah, no, it's really stable. Um, and then once I get to the trail, so I still have to change it from 
highway to trail. To trail mode, yes. But it's on my transfer case shifter, so if I'm shifting into four wheel drive, it's easy yeah. to switch it over. And then another thing, when you do click it into trail mode, if you get up past 30 miles an hour, it actually transfers back to road mode. So oh, let's really? say, yeah, we automatically did that. A little bit of a safety feature. And then that pretty much, once you're past 30 miles an hour, you're on a fire road, you're going faster. So we wanted to get back to more driver input and having more of a stable vehicle, right? So if you're just out for the whole, I get a better example is you're on one trail, but you have to go down a road for five miles, like, you know, a decent road yep. you know, for five miles and then get to get on the next trail. It's just going to do it for you. You don't need to think about it. But if you're city driving all day and it's just best to leave it in road mode because then even at those slower speeds, it's not going to be as loose and off-road setup, obviously. Now, what about like a high-speed setup? High speed setup. Like right. if I want to drive off road fast, do I go right. highway or Yeah, trail? you're gonna go highway and if you wanted to on this Jeep setup, you're gonna actually want to go in manually configure it. On all of our other vehicles like the Raptor, the F two fifty, um, some other ones that are coming out soon, we actually have a Baja mode. Oh. And okay. so off road desert mode is actually what what we call it and that automatically brings it jeep we didn't do that uh there's some new software that it will have all three modes but it's, a lot of people on jeeps wanted the manual mode still so we decided to go and um, keep the manual mode on the jeep only i feel like the off-road scene is getting more and more they're getting car guys, they're getting street guys that are now getting into off-roading. And when you're on the street, you you either drive like a normal person or you drive fast. Those are kind of like the only, yeah. like when you're a car guy and you're a street car guy, you drive fast. There's no technical. So a lot of those guys come to the off-road side and they're like, sweet, let's drive fast. And they don't always appreciate the like slow technical driving, but they also for for years we haven't had suspensions designed for going fast and now we're getting more and more of it so i could definitely see how a baja mode would be valuable that's the i use like ocotillo wells as like a, there's like some really cool slow technical rock crawling sections and like you know especially jeeps they've been set up for that forever but then some of those washes when you're getting to the thing you know with this we just click it we click it a little bit stiffer you can go 55 miles an hour through it it's almost like driving a polaris razor i actually now in rocket teal i drive the jeeps it's got ac i don't get all dusty <laughs> my kids are out in the razors getting all dusted out but we can all go 50 miles an hour through these washes and it handles like it handles like a raptor out there and what about what about the overland crowd like how does this system help those guys that put a rooftop tent and a fridge and a scottle and a hundred tons of extra stuff see this probably shines with that group more than anybody um we have a couple of things number one you can just adjust everything even if somebody puts a heavier front winch on the front you can now just fine tune in auto mode still have your front in a little stiffer the biggest feature though is our rear load so if you're empty right now we have nothing in here you don't need it once you put your tent on you load it just turn up your rear load it automatically changes the algorithm to only, it only affects the rear shocks. Um, even when we're pulling a trailer with this Jeep, we'll sometimes pull a razor behind it. And I just crank the rear load all the way up. I, I shouldn't say I've been driving 80 miles an hour in <laughs> California, but- <laughs> Well, we, in those other states. Yeah, there's other states and we can drive 80 miles an hour and the Jeep, it's completely fine. So it doesn't, it doesn't increase your spring rate to hold the weight, nope. but it increases the shock tuning to help control the weight. Yeah. And you literally dynamically, instead of every time hitting a bump, you know, your spring can only do what the spring can do. Sure. But instead of every time dynamically hitting it, um, you're gonna go and move three inches. Now let's say you're gonna only move an inch. You have all that extra weight, so it's still comfortable. But if you took the mean line of all of that, your ride height is right. And you actually can feel your front tires on the ground. Because you know, a Jeep with a lot of weight in the back, it feels like there's nothing on the front. It just helps balance everything out and makes it, it just it's a way more comfortable ride. So, uh, you have this for Jeep, you have this for Raptor. 
Raptor, we actually do the electronic system and we're actually controlling the Fox shocks. Oh, okay. Because the Raptors already come with Fox Live Valve. And so it's it's actually a decent shock. So we we do tune the shocks and revalve them and change the bypass tubes. But we, you know, you can take a Raptor on our test course, the stock one, the fastest you can go is 55 miles, or pardon me, 30 miles an hour. And, you know, we hit it at 55 all day and you don't think twice about it. And so, but you have this universal kit. Universal kit, yeah. So if I want to put it on a K5 Blazer or a old Porsche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which may or may not yeah. have wasted a bunch of money on. Um, or somebody's got a rock buggy or... All of those. Does this stuff... Perfect. Like, is this stuff in... Like, are Ultra 4 and Desert guys using stuff like this? Um, actually, we sponsored a Jeep. Yeah? But yeah, he... Man, we're so bummed. He almost beat the Ford guys. He broke on the last section. Ah. And um, so the stock Jeep class, he's been running this. He's actually got a cool set. He's even got an automatic tire changing Oh, thing. is that uh, John, John Williams? John Williams, yeah. yeah. So he's been running it and doing a bunch of testing for us. Oh, okay. So for rock crawling and all that, this is just perfect. So for the person that wants to have different types of terrain, um, either set it and forget it or have it so that you can tweak it a little bit here and there. Well, the other thing too is like with the universal kit, you can go, we're actually shooting a video right now on how to tune for a universal kit. Cause you can turn off all the active parts and you can set it up. So many times like on the big trucks, it's like you turn it up stiffer to get that control, but then it's beating you up on the highway. Now it's like you just hit one button and it takes care of it. So what you do though, is like every shock tuner has got a different philosophy and different settings. We're just talking about some of them. Most of us are guilty of over like being yeah. too stiff, but now you just do one little click and you have that option. So with a universal kit, you're going to go and tune your baseline first and then add the active part to it. And that way you're going to get the best ride possible. So this system doesn't actually change the pistons and like the shims and the the orifices of the oil going through it only changes from the shock body to the shock reservoir correct like that little bridge you guys open or close that to allow yeah, we have a special well actually it's a custom valve that we developed and it's controlling basically any oil displaced by the shock shaft that goes into the reservoir we're controlling it with that um and it's doing it quickly. It's basically like the compression adjuster you get out and turn by hand, but it's just doing it in milliseconds instead of yeah. getting out of the car. I think it's really cool. I feel like I need more time with it. Um, maybe get it on that Dodge. Put it, yeah, maybe put it on my tow rig or put it on some other project or borrow this Jeep or go out with you guys again sometime. And because I feel like this controller has a bunch of settings that is not intuitive to a guy that doesn't play with it. But at the same time, once you get it dialed in for how you drive or what you usually do, it seems like it's an easy thing to go back to. The main thing for most people is just pick what kind of train you're on. If right. you're a bombing in the desert, you know, pick bomb or desert mode. If you're out a mammoth, like slow 15 miles of where it's just rocky and beat up, pick trail mode. And when you're on the streets, pick. And at that point, it just does it itself. For the guys that want to take it to that next level, you can go and fine tune all these aspects and just play with it. It's all right at your fingertips. Like normally as a shock tuner, every time you want to do that, you're ripping four shocks off, ripping apart, changing shims, trying to chase it. Now, you try one setting and it takes you five seconds to get there. So you can make progress so quickly. How much does this cost? For the Jeep, all four shocks, the whole system, everything included, um, full active, um, ECU, touch screen, um, all the wiring, like turnkey is 4,600. Okay. Yeah, 4,599. Um, the Carly, like F250 um, kits, 46. Um, our Toyota stuff coming out, uh, it's front spring, it's coilover. Now, now for somebody that doesn't, like for a viewer that doesn't know what, like what would a set of big high dollar two and a half shocks be so, for a Jeep? A Jeep, so two and a half um, with compression adjusters, um, like a Fox 2, they're right around three thirty two hundred dollars right now okay. for two and a half all the way around. We do have a non-active setup for a Jeep. 
because some people just don't want extra electronics, but what it does do, you basically can control front and rear independently. It's just a toggle switch, like every, you know, light switches that everybody has. Yep. And you can go soft, um, soft, um, medium or um, stiff. And it's a simple system and it's $32.99. Okay. So instead of having to get out to adjust your shocks, you, you can just can, click a button. You can do it inside. Yeah. So if you're on the road, what it ends up being is road mode, you're either full stiff or medium. And then if you're in trail mode, you're full soft or medium, depending remember, on the trail. Do you remember the old school ranchos that I had know, all people, the hoses? I never and, got to experience that, but I've heard so many stories about that because a lot of guys did play with that it's, back in the day. It's pretty amazing how far we have come. Yeah. You know, computer, I wanted to do this 15 years ago, and for one computer, it was going to be, I think we're quoted $22,000. Wow. And you know what I mean? Now, computers and what we can do, at the costs have come down. <laughs> the chip problem hasn't helped, but yeah. uh, well, overall. Well, I think the entire world is in this, like, the fact that you can even find material to make shots and <laughs> is pretty crazy these days. No, we have to order everything so far in advance. All right, so the website is eclickshocks.com. Yeah, that's a perfect one for information on um, this. It's right here on the window. It's back there on the back window if you can see it in the video. Uh, this is Dan. Tell Dan that Fred sent you and uh, check these things out. I'm going to get some more seat time in this down the road and maybe we will even do an install on a project truck someday. That's awesome. it for this Dirt Daily. Thanks for coming by, Dan. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for letting me borrow your Jeep. We'll see you guys next time.